Now it's time to do annotations. And we're going to do the short version of the annotations in this movie. So if you're down to about a half hour or 45 minutes even, let's do this short version. But the annotations will be something similar to this where we've listed all of the photos that we've used in the book and who the photographer was and a link to that original photo. We don't have to do quite as much detail for your photos because you took them. But we do want to at least label all of the photos so that you know what kind of plants they are for the future. It's just a nice thing to do. So let's start with slide three where we have our first set of photos. To start off we're going to select the first photo here. Just click once to make that selection. If you don't already have the inspector window open, click inspector up on the toolbar and it's just this little guy here. We want to be on the ruler tool or metrics inspector. Our media inspector, let's just shrink that down a bit so we can see both of those. Looking at the file info, we can see that it's image 20. And if we look in our list here and find image 20, and then the tag that goes with that. So that's the yellow wood sorrel. And it's good to check the photo of the tag because sometimes the numbers don't match up with what we see in the browser just because of camera glitches and who knows what. So image 20, I see that there. Here's the yellow wood sorrel. So click the gray eye button to view the full information about that plant. And here we go. And what we're interested in is the name in the white box here. So just click to the right of the text and drag with the left mouse button held down to make the selection. We can do two things to copy this. We can right click on it and choose copy, or you can use the keyboard shortcut Command and C. Both will get the job done. Forty-nine is the passion flower. I know that's going to be on the third page. I see passion flower there. Oh, so hopefully you don't get a an error message like this that they couldn't find a match. Or if you happen to type in the name of your plant and you didn't choose it from the list, you may have that same issue. Not a problem. We can go up to the search field and. I can just type in, I'm looking for passion flower. And we just have to put in the first part. Click the find button. And now we have two possible choices. Passion flower, which is what we want. What else is there? Purple passion vine. So we definitely want the first one. So there we go. Now we can get the name, copy. Now let's go back to Keynote. There's a couple things we can do. We can right click and choose paste and that gets our text label. Or I can do the shortcut Command V and that will paste in the exact same thing. It seems to fit nicely in this sort of gap underneath here. And if I drag my label till I get that vertical yellow line, I know that my label is centered with the photo. And I'm going to change the alignment for the text to be centered. And I'm going to change the size because it sticks out on either end. I'm going to change the size from 14 to 10. It doesn't have to be very big, just so that you, you know, you've got that there. Now we're going to repeat with our second one. So I click once to select it. I can see it's image 8, there's image 8, the tag is the Norfolk Island Pine, and if I go back to the browser, I don't actually need to close this window, I can, but if I just go to the next plant and click the information button, it's going to get updated. So make my selection, if it's, uh, yours probably won't be on two lines, but if it is, just drag to the end going to Command C to copy that, come back over to Keynote, Command V to paste, 
and we need to do a little bit of fiddling. There we go. We've got our vertical yellow line, and I can see I've got a horizontal line knowing that my label is matching the vertical position of my other one, which is what we want. Change the alignment to center. Change the size to 10. This one, because it's long, we actually need to do one more thing. We're going to resize our text box to fit the photo. Just like that. And we can even double click in it, press return to put the, uh, the location all on one line. That looks kind of nice. Now the third one, click once on that, image 37. So there's our tag, chandelier plant. Come back over, chandelier plant 37 is going to be chandelier plant. There we go. Click the gray eye, make our selection, Command C to copy, Command V to paste, center it, and get the horizontal alignment correct. Center, change to 10. There we go. Now we've got this slide finished. And we can move on to the next one. There we go. Slide four is done. There we go. Slide five done. Move on to slide six. Slide six is done. Let's move on to slide seven. Now we have slide seven done. Let's move on to slide eight. And this one's a little busier, so, and we have a smaller image size here, so we may need to be a little more fussy with that, so paste, center it. Center that, change to 10. Oh, well, luckily that's a short one. Let's check this one out. So let's see, we got it centered horizontally and vertically. Center that, change to 10. And we definitely need to do our double line. That looks pretty good. And keep going. And set to 10. There we go. Slide 8 is finished. And we can even do slide 9. It's going to depend on how you set up the photos. 57 is the pearly dots. And let's say we kind of put it near the bottom like that. And what we can do is, depending on what your photo looks like, we may need to change the color. So there we've probably isn't too bad. The other thing we can do is we can put shadow on it to make the uh, the text stand out a bit. And if we go to 
our graphic setting here. Here we can play with the drop shadow. Now the blur is way too blurry. So let's make that small and we'll make the offset a bit smaller. And just taking a look at it, we can see the drop shadow. If we, if we uncheck it, we can see the difference. It does make it a little bit easier. We may want to have the offset fairly small, like two pixels in the blur, one pixel maybe, two pixels. One, one seems to make it really sharp, especially when it's small text like that. So why don't we go for that? And the other stuff we can, uh, we can leave the way it is. Let's go back to our ruler tool. And this one here, 47. Paste it on and center it. Seems to fit. We'll keep it as 14. That'll make it a bit easier to read. And we don't need to change the color of that. This one here, 59, is our Japanese water lily. We'll paste that and put it, center it, and we've got it lined up with that one. Now this one, it gets lost in the dark parts of the background there. So we will need to change the font color to white. We'll turn on the shadow, and luckily it kept the same settings as our last one, and we can see that we can read that quite nicely. There we go. At this point, we definitely want to save. So file and save a version, or save, whatever you've got up there. My file seems to say save, but I'll bet you yours says save a version.